I hate to break the fishing news up, Graham Chuck, but I'd like to speak about the ice hockey. Congratulations. You're one of the 13 listeners of the Real Life Podcast. We just traded a migraine in for like an orgasm. You might want to mark that down. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All of my projects are on schedule until they're not. A member of the Nation Network of Podcasts. About as funny as we're going to get uh. today. Now, you're not going to know what time this comes out because this isn't a live radio show, but we were told in our group chat today there is something happening. Jay needs us to start this an <laughs> hour early. And I'm thinking to myself, shit, man, this guy works hard. We had a town hall meeting today. He's got shit to do. We'll come in early. We harangue Chalmers. This is starting early so that Jay can take Waz, a company <laughs> asset, and go in line for tarps at Folk Fest. Now, that is the most Edmonton thing you can do. Hey, and I respect the use of company resources. If, if you've been, well, we're going to film content, so I'm going to try to put a spin on. I don't want to be robbing. The <laughs> That's company. an afterthought, but go on. <laughs> yes, it was. It was. It, it was. It was. It was digging up. Yeah. Uh, but what is everything okay? Yeah. It's folk fest. And for, for the, everybody, for people out there to understand the tarp run draw. That's real. It's a very complicated and very folk fest system. And there's ways to game it, or at least try to game it, so you can get drawn early to sit closer on the stage or to your desired location on the hill. For those of you that do not know what the tarp run is for folk fest is every single day, about three hours before the show starts. Uh, Well, it's so on the, on Thursday and Friday. So also in folk fest, you always refer to the day as the the Friday, the Thursday, yes. the Saturday. You're making me hate folk fest, so stop. No, 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 I no, notice, no. I notice, I notice how people talk. I'm like, okay, I guess this is what this we is do. We're you playing are, I'm yep. a folk fester. Yep, play it. So on the Thursday and the Friday, the tarp run, uh, the corral opens from two to three. And the draw happens after they shut the, the game. draw. Yeah. It's like a the hippie draw. hunger games, basically. Yeah, it, they all line up is. It is. and then it's on. But you can't pledge tribute, unfortunately. So you picture all these people in line and they've all got a folded up tarp under their arm. Birkenstock wearing when, 88% of the people. In when line. the gate opens, it is a free for all. <laughs> you run. Well, you're, yeah. you're, you're missing a Birkenstocks. Step. Actually, you know what? We're going to document the whole thing anyways. Chalmers, keep <laughs> going. Document your Birkenstocks. I'm, I'm telling it you're, for people that don't You're skipping care the or big no. step. The lottery? So you get there at <laughs> two today, a.m. or p.m. p.m. Mm-hmm. and they and they corral you in this fenced off area like cattle. Yep. And they give you this ticket. Everyone gets a ticket. And Golden everyone's, ticket. Everyone's tickets different color. And then what they do is once two thirty, they start doing the draw, and you get one of thirty different tickets, I think. And they say, okay, <laughs> whoever has this ticket, you're now first in line. So then you run out, they lead you out, and then you're the first in line. It's to like be the great in. land grab of 1918. Yeah. This is how they do it in Astro World too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so then you wait, <laughs> you wait, stomp people. you wait in line now to, to outside of the Folk Fest grounds <laughs> until the complete draw is done. The full line is formed, and then you still wait some more. Then you hear the bagpipes. Then if you if you get drawn, bagpipes, bagpipes, the the bagpipes, bagpipes. You oh. hear the bagpipes, and then they open, and then they let you in like run by run and you can't run because that's unfolking. because you're baked most likely because <laughs> you just still, finished you just finished your first pre-roll of the day yeah yeah and yeah. you're probably getting hit with uh birkenstocks that are you're flying from oh, people yeah. running <laughs> by that time i'm barefoot the smell of incense is in the air <laughs> essential gonna oils muddy. it was gonna be muddy this this season. you can hear liberal arts degrees flapping in the wind <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> and so you run so you run to this hill which is slippery and like gonna be wet because yeah. everywhere. it's been raining yeah, mm-hmm. it's an already it's slippery. It's an already slippery hill. So I don't know what you guys are thinking, but you should have your 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 terraforma uh, Solomon uh, uh, hiking boots on for this. Your Patagonia yeah. edition would be folky. You'd probably get berated by some baked hippie and then you go and you run on the hill and you basically <laughs> lay out your tarp, throw four nails in the corner. Yell hurrah! Light your second pre roll of the day and Fight go a lady home. In pajama pants and now. The sanctity of the tarp run is that's yours. Yeah. No one. Nobody's going to touch it. No one's going to no touch it. No one will walk on it. That is yours now. You own that. You've homesteaded. You own that piece of land for yeah. four. Well, not for four days for that night. So you so do it all over again. The strategy you is to do that every day, every, every day. single and day. The, and in the you weekends, your tarp. the draws at 7 a.m. The oh. weekends yeah, on the Friday, on the Saturday Ugh. and the Sunday, the draws are at seven. So now we're here an hour early. We have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived. I also thought you had a meeting. <laughs> well, it's a meeting, all Didn't right. Did I straight up tell you why? Maybe. 
You threw me under the bus in the group. So I was saying it was your idea. <laughs> well, like I was like, hey, Jay needs to start early. Again, Why are you throwing me under the bus? Yeah, this is essential yeah. things. Make sure your first pre-rolled in the line is more of a sativa, maybe something that's going to give <laughs> you energy. Up. That should give you a clue. Up. More of an upper. When he got mad at you and said you threw him under the bus, that should have been a clue. That <laughs> I knew. Listen, my wife was going to go on this tarp run with them. Yeah. I knew exactly where he was going. Chalmers was going <laughs> to experience the joys of my efforts. Yeah, I'm going to be there tonight. Yeah, on my on the Thursday. I'll sit in his tarp. Sitting on, on his tarp. Oh, yeah. On the Thursday. On the Thursday. the Thursday. Thursday. Huh? I'm going to be sitting on his tarp, and if it sucks, well, looks like I'll never get this hour back. You're going to find another friend with a different, with another <laughs> yeah, location. Because right. the thing, we go as a group. We try to get two tarps together, and then so there's the whole. And I'm going to try to see if we can document it without being too intrusive. But like, people will go to the draw with like 30 people. To, and then what, and then what they do is they go and trade tickets to make, to make sure they have one of every ticket. That's bullshit. That's, that's not the folk fest way, but that's yeah. the game no. within the game. And then what they do is once they get drawn, they do the folky thing and they start like, we've already got our draw because you can't, if you have a ticket, you can't leave or you forfeit your ticket and they'll say, Oh, we've, we're already good. You or you take this. So sometimes I've been received good fortune from some of these people and got further ahead in the line because they sat and waited and did the right thing. Is there ever any violence? No, you know, it's very, uh, Hey bro. Everybody's baked, man. That's How violent can they be? Way. It's very, everybody's chill. just super jacked to see feist tonight. And who else? Uh, yeah, that, that is so you. not da, the Thursday of you. Darka Barka. No, the first and, one. I can't uh, remember the Daka second one. Braka there and watch house and then feist at nine. Watch house. Why couldn't it be the watchman or lighthouse? <laughs> maybe, like those two bands a lot better than watch. House. Maybe they've combined. Ooh, maybe the collab. You know who's not performing at Folk Fest? Tory Lanez. Wow. He's God, gone he's, to the clink busy. for 10 years he's for shooting busy. Megan the Stallion in the toe. Yeah, he's busy. <laughs> like every good career, there's a shooting. Do you know what's good about the Folk Fest? Oh. They allow you to now have alcohol everywhere, don't they? Yep. So you used to have like just a one licensed area for the beer garden, and it was a gong show. How hard is it to bring your own booze. In. Well, I don't well, think it's that hard. We'll talk off camera. So I'll tell you. So this weekend and the reason why I wasn't, well, we didn't do a podcast Monday, but I was in Pigeon Lake for the Pigeon Lake music festival this weekend. Yep. When all three, uh, all two days, it was Even the third the day. No, I did not go to the did Sunday. Did go by the those there? I don't know what they do, <laughs> but. Harp run? It was pretty awesome. Like, okay. So the bands, great things the notable bands there, the trues were there. They oh, were pretty yeah. good. Kim Mitchell headlined the Saturday night. Woo. Did he sing Patio Lantern? You know, he did. Yeah, of course he did. Yeah. Is he still a wild party? He's a wild party. All the way. Do, 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 do. How's he looking? Okay. Oh, he looks great. Does Just he really? The long flowing hair. I mean, he's, 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 a, it. he's a great, no, I don't think he's got long hair. No. Oh, really? I don't know. Maybe I didn't really like stare at him. Can you imagine if he showed up and dance. didn't sing Patio Lanterns? They're like, we're going to execute or you. Go for yeah, a soda. Patio Lanterns, go for a soda. I'm a wild party. He kicked ass. You know who was right before him? Did the opposite of kicking ass, which Bruce would be, what would the opposite of kicking ass be, Big Milk? Uh, Sucking ass. Sucking ass, yeah. Suck, uh, Biff yeah. Naked. Dep- didn't really? do a good oh, job. Oh, no. I love oh. Biff Naked. So we're listening to the songs on the way to the concert. Legend. Yes. Space Man. Yeah. Tango Shoes. Tango shoes. Uh, what's the other one? Um, oh my God. Now I'm spacing on the other one. Jingle bells. Uh, sucking anyways, ass. She comes on and the first thing she does is like Moment slam poetry. Oh. And, you, and then she sings that. like eight or nine songs that nobody knows. On no. the Saturday and the it Sunday. It got to the point where everybody's like, yo, space, poetry. sing space, man. Sing Patty Atlanta. Yeah. But Friday night. Right before the trues. The Friday night. Edmonton's own Dan Dixon is up there. Okay. Yep. He gets up there. It's a pretty chill vibe. Uh-huh. I just took a first hit of the pen. Things are starting to settle in. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty calm. And he sings two songs. And you know what? It's okay. It's good. It's good. Then he goes into exactly what the whole place needed. And that is, he played about six or seven old classics, like Summer of 69. Oh, covers, banging covers. covers. Banging Genius. covers that everybody could sing. The place went from five to 10 immediately. And it was the best part of the show. The dude absolutely rocked. And so it's a smaller venue, Pigeon Lake Music Festival, small venue. We talked about sneaking things in. We watched a guy. I sat down, mm-hmm. beer line up, super long. Ticket line. And I still don't understand music festivals. I am chalm out on a music festival that separates buying drink tickets to then go buy 
a drink. Yep. Just instead of having three ticket windows and three drink windows, have six drink windows. It's not that hard. I know. Folk so, Fest used to be that But then that you way. need more people with their that. pro serve. But so right off the bat, the ticket lineup is immense, yeah. a mile long. What's and the inventory nobody when in you the drink. get up there? We'll get to that. Actually, it was, it was, mm-hmm. so not good, but there's nobody in the drink lineup. Everybody's in the ticket lineup. Fast forward an hour later, nobody in the ticket lineup, everybody yeah. in the drink lineup. And you're like, everyone's zagging ridiculous. and zagging. They got a zig and zag. So to my chagrin, oh. Oh. <laughs> not a mixed cocktail in the house. Can't get them. Don't have them. Good thing you always Who need that emergency them? Texas. Don't making. have them. So I'm like, well, shit. So now I got to drink like either a twisted tea, white oh. claws. Uh-huh. They have this Hires root beer vodka drink, which one, was one way, is, too, I love root beer, way too sweet. Yeah, one is a good one. one. Yeah. So it's like. Says Co- the Bud Light Soda guy. I had a it's like Coors Lights yeah. and Twisted Teas. But we sit down and a guy walks in with a, with a, with a wagon. And this guy's got gold chains, no sleeves, of course. Backwards hat probably about 55, 60 years old. And you can just tell he is the mayor of this place. He's shaking hands. He's kissing babies. He sits down and I am fixated in on this guy's program. They go through your cart and he like lifts up. He's got this secret compartment. He pulls out a thing that looks like an umbrella, twists off the handle. Oh yeah. That's vodka. Pours a Red Bull in there, a little ginger ale. And I just looked at him. I just watched this guy eat in awe. Pulls off his leg. Bourbon. So the next he day, he sawed his own leg off to so, bring a Mickey in. Oh, yeah. The next day, you know what he did? I bought a six pack of Coke Zero bottles, tightly wrapped in shrink wrap. Right? Yeah. Made a little slit on the bottom, pulled one of the bottles out, poured rye into it, put it back, taped it up, put it in the wagon. Couldn't even tell. Just looked at it. Just looked like pop. So the kid got his mixed cocktails outside, but I had already, I had to like bought in so many drink tickets that I left home. I left with like 30 of them. Oh, that's the, but worst. that's what I was handing them. Like I was giving them to like my brother-in-law and people like that's, that were that's around. That's very pigeon like festival. We, yeah. We, you. yeah. But so I got my mixed drinks the second day. It was a hell of a good time. Very family friendly. The bad part about it is driving in and out of there. You had to have a designated driver. Thank God. We've got like nieces that are, like 17. (laughs) So they can't drink, but they can drive. And so that really helped. But yeah. So can you do that at the music, at the folk fest? I knew that we'd get away with that at folk fest. I think they're going to be a little bit, but you can't take a wagon in there. Like it's a backpack and they go through your shit. And I don't think the embarrassment of getting caught is worth worth it. The $30 you're going to save. Unless you're absolutely particular like me and need a Ryan Coke, but need need well i can't just can't drink beer all night well, they, don't do mix, they don't mix drinks to the beer gardens they don't it's all big rock beer i know it's Ooh. warm big rocks like what's their super bowl yeah. I, can, I, like, you know, I, I think that last year Run there was back. ryan cokes <laughs> my recollection is there was ryan cokes it's like they the old the old dutch central. ad at the yeah, old arena i know why i know why no, there was i didn't ryan take cokes. them in i know why there was ryan i didn't cokes. take them in Remember in the old Rexall, there was the old Dutch ad at the end of the arena. The only time you'd ever see an old Dutch ad in the world was that one. Yeah, ad. they have one like marketing person and they have one client. It's 108% yeah. of their budget. Yeah. So yeah, music festival. It's music festival time. It's tarp run season. Last weekend was BVJ. Anybody go to that? No. No. I don't know if I can go to that. Apparently it was like so busy and so many people everywhere. Yeah. And it's just like. It's a, a madhouse. You couldn't even like, you gotta, I gotta go experience it once, but yeah, it's the sanctity of putting your chair down in front of the stage in order to see like Dirk's Bentley. That does not go. Like no, I had that friends that said they there. put their what chair do you down, put your chair down. Like you can like put tarp, your chair down chairs. like a tarp. You can, so like, oh, you can when I it. used to go to BBJ, we used to go every year, 2003, four ish around that era. The sanctity of the chair was in place. My niece was just there this weekend. Chairs. No, uh, no, Generation. there was somebody we when, used when, to be a proper society. Yeah. When my friend, who's a big dude, got to his chair. There was a person standing on it with muddy boots on his chair. And he's just like Rick James. Yeah, Rick James. Fuck your <laughs> chair. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's good to know that it's good to know there's still music festivals out there that have some some um, integrity. Yeah, not, like it's it's called being folky. Like it's oh God. It's, it's you do your best to make I, me hate this festival so I, much. <laughs> I I know because I I'm subscribed to it now. I I started later in life and I have a regret. 
Because our buddy used to go all the time. He'd be like, you got to come. You got to come. I'm like, fuck that. We were like, thugging in those days. We, we were not here for but no his, folk his, music. His we family were. used to sell spoon necklaces. They still do. Like, they still sell them there? there. Oh, yeah. Good for them. So they, they take, they just would go to like, get abundances of spoons from garage sales anywhere. And his, and the dad would, would like fold them into art. The spoon man. Hey, and well, became that, the spoon man. They got the spoon he's got man. a booth and he sells spoon stuff. Go check him out. Ray. That air engagement ring spoon. Yeah. Decent idea. Hello. O- on budget too. From yeah. folks. It'll figure budget. Antonia. I went to a concert on Friday night. And the only reason I want to bring it up is because I loved how Avenged Sevenfold handled their tickets. I've talked about how much I spent on blank tickets on the podcast before Avenged Sevenfold. You would buy your seats or whatever. You did not get access to your tickets. Like you knew where you're sitting, all that kind of stuff until two days before. So you could not flip and resell immediately. Ooh, so it like kept that. all the prices down. Everybody needs to do that. It yeah. was the best. Cause you mentioned Bruce Springsteen before. I was just like, Oh, I'd go see Bruce. I wonder what tickets look like for that. The exact same spot where I sat for Avenged Sevenfold on Friday. Those were $1,200 per seat. <sighs> That is crazy. Used to be able to go to like a concert. This is old man talk, but man, for like 89 for bucks. 25 cents. Yeah. I went to Nickelback for 110. Where, where, where yep. were your seats? They were lower bowl. We got them like right off the jump as a part of some pre-sale. So mm-hmm. it was like, good. you got to be crafty. You're right. You have can't you, just like go and like, have you seen the picture? You know how we do the face match? Like we talked about the face match. I've seen you totally talked about like the Tim Allen one, but have you ever seen Chad Kruger from Nickelback and <laughs> Zach Braff from Scrubs? Basically makes Dak Shepard. <laughs> like, oh, I can see it. I can see it. It's in like, my head, I, can see I it. wish, Dude, I wish it was going to be, if you're giving us a second, I wonder if one of us could have got that. You probably could have. You probably could have. Yeah. I love a good face mashup. Yeah. Well, today's episode is brought to you by Will. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tyler's yeah. watching the Jays. Good game, segue, so Tyler. Tyler. Good segue. This. I'm watching the Jays. Today's game. podcast brought to you by Ryan Pike's new book coming out in February. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can we say that on the pod? Because yeah, that was not? so funny. Was oh, we have a company town hall. Everyone is on it. And Jay's <laughs> updating like our quarter goals and what we've done recently, where we're going. And then any questions, a couple of people ask questions. It's quiet. Ryan Pike from Flames Nation turns on his mic and just goes, my book's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a question? So if or? you want to buy it, do it. And like, that was it. And then Wanye just killed him. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I would rather unlearn how to read. That's what I said, what then read a single book about the Calgary Flames. <laughs> <laughs> unlearn oh. how to read. All I know is that in the next Playmaker Town Hall, I'm going to be plugging, plugging BLTN right at the end. Oh, you should, minute. you should. Jordan, Latin thanks America. for your opportunity. <laughs> There's 200 people from Latin America on that call. You may as well get them listening. Uh, they might like what's going on. Oh, I fucking loved it. It was hilarious. Oh, what the- but yeah. you know what? It's Ryan Pike. God love him. I love him. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love him. wrote a book that was published. I yeah. respect it. And he's got a second on the way. I wouldn't read it. There's oh, a like, difference. Yeah. I loved it. I thought uh, it was As I was saying, podcast brought to you by Will Hawk Beef Jerky. If you uh, want to find out more about our friends at Will Hawk Beef Jerky, you can head to willhawkbeefjerky.com or three spots in the Edmonton area, Leduc, Spruce Grove, or the kiosk in West Edmonton Mall, entrance 44. Temporary fourth location, September 1st, Nation Golf Tournament. It'll be there. Stock up. I felt like that Ryan Pike thing was like a corporate test because you just finished going through our values. You're like, this is what we stand for. That's being hungry. And I'm like, uh huh. That's and being a disruptor. A Flames fan's like, I wrote a book about the Flames. I was like, not today. <laughs> not today. Wrong chat. Not today. He disrupted. Well, yeah, it was, a dis- it was great. And we closed the disruption. Yeah, it was, was great. Nobody's oh, it was reading fantastic. your book. I loved it. You want a bit update on the Oilers Nation Open and our chance, the people's chance to golf with either. Yes. Chalmers and Jay or myself and Liam. Yes. Your guy's bid is at $1,050. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. We were tied for a little. Oh, no. Team Tyler and Liam's bid is up to $1,200. Come on. Woo! Shit. Who? Can't say. What uh, the hell? Same person. Mm-hmm. Not as us, but like same person. Yeah, that he upped it. his bid. I didn't realize that this was going to pit our value against each other. Now I'm kind of. Chalmers, we got to take to social media. <laughs> All right. The fact that they want to golf with these Yahoo. Okay. Well, listen, if, if they're watching the video, can you have somebody create said post, take my phone, do said post. <laughs> yeah, that would be Waz great. To do it. Cause I don't fucking do it. I can't do it. I don't know. Just get Waz interview. Hey, Waz comes to the door. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. He's got my back. All right, I have a question about... But not for the next hour. He's doing a tarp run with me. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my God. I cannot believe you're taking a staff. Well, uh, (laughs) this goes back back to Nation Onia uh, heyday when I didn't know what was involved in the tarp run. 
And I just heard of like companies being like, yeah, no, we just get people on the team to go do it if we're busy. Remember? Because we were in a meeting with an accountant. Yeah. Like, like, we oh. send the juniors and we're like, I'm oh, like, that's genius. genius. We have Sweet. juniors. I, I thought it was like an hour. I'm like, Chris, the intern. I'm like, could you go do the tarp run? You should hire well, an intern just four for, hours later. Just for Folk Fest. Just for Folk Fest weekend. everyone. <laughs> like, hey. Because of my. Till next year. <laughs> I'm having a meeting with Chris, the intern tomorrow morning, by the way. Well, see if he wants to come do a tarp run with I'll me tomorrow. Him. I'll ask him. I want to know more about this after the podcast. Yeah. So do I. I'm very intrigued by yeah. this. So transitioning to a similar topic, but different. We were yeah. sitting here in this room. And we we're talking about that Donair costume. Yeah. It's up for auction. And then I go, we should get our own Donair costume. And no one says a word. And then I'm watching on social media, OilersNation.com. Uh -huh. Were you at the game with an unsanctioned Donair? Yes. How? Why didn't you say anything in the podcast? Like exactly what you're saying we're going to do. Like who was that Donair? So Is that, that our Donair? That's, that's, that, yes, we won it. That's ours? It's yeah, we, ours. We have the Donair costume. Aaron's got to bring it to the office. But I don't get it. So they made a second Donair, and then that night we won it? So, well, the government's doing their thing. Right. And check on it. The, the, what does the government have to do yeah. about a Donair costume? So they were selling an So the host donair. of the Riverhawks uh, was, got a Santa? Donair. Santa? Santa got a Donair costume. Um, and I think because one of the competitions that night, you had to chug Donair sauce. Yeah. Yes. You think, well, you did it. So well, I, yeah. allegedly yeah. I did it. Uh, yeah, no, that is uh, disgusting. I had to, but I didn't, uh, it looked like you did. So he's wearing the costume and it's make a wish, raise money for make a wish. So I just tweeted the river Hawks. Like if that, if that costume's up for auction, I'll start, we'll, well, we will start the bidding and the rest is history. So uncontested. You won the cost uncontested. What did it cost? $500. And now we have a walking donair. We have a walking donair. This is immense. Exactly. We, did, we got it. money well spent. We not, did not pay sixteen thousand dollars for it. Was yes, that part of the town hall meeting? Grand. Did you make sure? No. Oh, the next one I'll wear it. So could, yeah, like, could <laughs> yeah. we just wear the donair costume to the game? I think you we can do whatever you want with it. It's your costume. We'll do Put it. a nation logo on the front for sure. Yeah, I think we got. I think we have to have some fun with it. Mm. It's probably gonna be a little swassy because he wore it on a couple hot days. That's the donair way. It, yeah, that's right. Is it washable? I, you, you don't. You don't want to fuck with the integrity. You want to dry clean that thing. Yeah. You don't want to risk the, risk the ruining the integrity, structural integrity. If you of that just thing. put that thing <laughs> on with a nation logo on the front and wore it to an Oilers game, it would be pandemonium. No, don't 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 have any matters. structural integrity, anyways. You take one bite and the whole thing's falling apart. Well, it depends where you go. Well, if you're an amateur, mm. also. Yeah. <laughs> just a nibble. <laughs> just a little nibble. <laughs> <laughs> don't air costumes. Oh my god. Well, we got one now. So, how was that Make a Wish? Did you? Oh, uh, well, you didn't hear on the podcast. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, what did Isaac get? The little fella. He got his wish was to go to Universal Studios. That's cool. Oh, sweet. So he came and did batting practice awesome. with the team because he loves baseball, and he got his wish granted. It was they did, he didn't know he was getting his wish granted. It was all a surprise. That's cool. So they pulled him up for oodle noodle trivia. <laughs> cool. And during the trivia, they revealed his wish. Was he pumped? Oh yeah, he was he was he super does. pumped. Awesome. Yeah, good on him. It was Love a cool it. moment. And we and Tyler did an interview with him. I don't know if mm -hmm. we posted it yet, but we got one. So you didn't know that that second donair costume existed when we did our. Did podcast. not know. I was in the stands. Because I was like, like, "What the hell? That's a fucking donair costume. We have to try to get we it." Basically, had this conversation. Like, if they had a second donair and they just didn't say yeah. anything in the podcast, that is some airtight donair costume game. Because I was with the Make a Wish crew after I sent that tweet, and then like someone from the Riverhawks are like, "Hey, like some random person is willing willing to offer money." for this costume, are you guys able to accept the donation for it? And they're like, yeah, of course we're a charity. And are you that random person? <laughs> and I'm like, and by the way, I'm like, that was me. <laughs> and they're like, Oh, Some okay, asshole well. on Twitter. Eh? The old and hoodwink I, again. Eh? King of the hoodwink. People, are, people are tweeting me like, Oh, I want to bid on it. How do I bid? I'm like, well, fuck. How did like, how, how did I bid? I just tweeted them. Yeah, I just hit a just home run. Oh, okay. I'm going to bid. I'm going to oh, bid. Weird. You made it really like, hard on the mic. We're like, bid it up, bid it up. It was oh. like, raise more money. And everyone's like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm submitting. But there was I'm no sitting. auction. Was there? No, we just created one. I wanted the costume. That's Charity like, wins. That's like the old, fit, the old, the old look at, look at the. How many times you have to have the Donair costume worn to be properly depreciated? Tense. Once. Once. <laughs> I bet you we can do one thing and it's probably do something. Oh, hopefully well, if we do it f funny enough, it's probably worth. Is that worth, is that gap principles though? I think you gotta have a few more uh, incidents to fully depreciate. Oh, if yeah. we get to 20,000 subs on YouTube, Tyler will wear it to the home opener. <laughs> <laughs> He's calculating home opener party launch party home opener launch okay, party. yeah deal you'll if wear we it to, to the game you'll wear it to our yeah. party if we do it to tw if we get to 20,000 subs on the Oilers Nation YouTube by our season opening party October 11th October 11th details to come I will wear the donair costume yeah I will wear it 
the whole day. I will bring it to my house. I will wake up in the morning and that is all I will wear oh, for the duration of the day. You got to get a nation logo on the front though. Cause there's yeah. going to be so many photos of it yeah. taken. Just oh, getting yeah. the logo included. No, you know what I thought would be cool. And this was going to be for other uses, but like we have these 3d printed Oilers nation logos. Make what a, if a we, chain. Yeah. Yes. Make a chain, a nation chain. How cool would that be? Yeah. That on a chain. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. Subscribe out of Oilers Nation on uh, yeah, YouTube. Yeah, Tyler in a Donair costume. And we can like document my 24 hours in a Donair oh, costume. Oh, 24 hours. Or now t- it's gotten better. Or we'll say like 20 hours. 24 or hours. Man, go to the bathroom in so that thing. Tyler does this cat food thing. I'll just piss right? He pants. loves doing these things. Now, Gregor on the same show that the cat food bet on is now laid a cat food bet where he'll eat cat food if Granlin gets 60. Points. Everyone's going to turn into cats. And now, and now Frank is like now percolating on when he's going to enter the chat with a cat food bet. What's wrong with these people? Anyways, don't air costume. So we got some, okay, we got some house uh, housekeeping items. Okay. October 11th, get ready. We're going to be doing our launch party, season launch party. We're trying you know to wear it. It'll be at Greta. Greta. We're working on some fun uh, activations around that. Stay tuned. The second thing, and this is <laughs> even more fun. <laughs> Why do you In say the history like of the bar, <laughs> no one's ever sang the name like that. Greta. That's going to be their soundbite. You'll walk, you open the door like, Greta. <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep going. Gang, gang. Yep. Uh, <laughs> November 10th. <laughs> November 10th to November 13th. Mm-hmm. The long weekend in November. Mm-hmm. What's happening? Nation vacation. Mm. First of the year. First of the year. I'm excited. We're going to Seattle, baby. I'm very excited. Climate Pledge, Climate Arena. Pledge Arena on the Saturday. The Saturday. Greta. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find the Greta of Seattle. <laughs> and we're adding a little spice to this one. Sunday, we're going to the Seahawks game. With tickets secured. Tickets secured. Chalmers, you're going to miss this nation vacation. Torch watch to where Seattle? Yeah. When? Oh, fuck Dude. you. Holy okay, Lord. Just listen. I know. Yes. You're not no, cutting this off. I'm g- you can talk whatever you want to talk about later. No, we got, we got the no, right answer from Chalmers. Off. Yes uh, and no. Just tell me when it is again. November 10th. Oh, okay. Long weekend, November. Remembrance Day. Yep. Weekend. You're on at, you're on camera with a light on you. <laughs> I know. Filming. Sweating. Live. And you're still not paying attention. To yes. I'm going to come. I just thought you were doing the, I just want to, I'm trying to get. Have you come on one yet? Never. Never. Are you thinking about, but they're like, I'm, I swear I'm coming to Vegas. We're not doing Vegas this year, by Dudes, the way. The second trip. We're I don't know if you on. know this. Should I say my life is pretty, pretty hectic. Okay. Okay. Things come and go. Don't care. It's working right. on his new album. Ad read. <laughs> Go. Housekeeping. Keep going. November 10th. We're going to the Oilers. Cracking on Saturday. Should Seahawks. we talk about the second trip we're working on? I'll be there. Seahawks. Seahawks. We wait. On Sunday. 100%. And you fly back Monday. Like it's a quick little turnaround. Yeah, so you only weekend. miss you only miss a bit, like it's just a bit of Friday of takeoff. Yeah. Because we're we're leaving kind of evening uh after work on Friday. Get in at like eight, nine o'clock, go somewhere as a team, hang out. Saturday's game day. Awesome. We'll find a pregame spot. Then we go Seahawks, baby. Personal guarantee I'll be there. Well, <laughs> personal guarantee. We're going Flip. to football game. Yeah. Flip oh, yeah I'm there. Tickets purchased. Flip. And they're playing the Cardinals. No, no, they're not. Doesn't like, matter. Playing Washington football there. team. I'm going to wear my Taylor Heineke jersey. They're the commanders. Are they going back to that? I don't know. They should. Uh, anyway, so what's uh, what's trip number two, Jay? Trip number two. I don't even know it yet. So yes, this is do. exciting. Oh, I do. Is we've got it. We've got to do it. We have a small oh, window yes. of opportunity to do this. We're going to the mullet arena. Woo. I did know that. Mullet. Still mullet. working on the dates, uh, but we're going to stay in Scottsdale, which is just a hell of a time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're going to go to the game. It's on the family day long weekend Monday. So we'll probably go like, we're either going to go Saturday to Tuesday or Sunday to Tuesday. Three nights or two nights. So if you have a family, Ditch this them. is the trip and for you. Are we debating? Or bring them. <laughs> or bring are we em. debating having a golf element in this? Well, or is it too hard to execute? No. Uh, great, not necessarily. great month to golf. If we leave, if we leave on the on the Saturday, yes, we could. The only hitch is that ten thirty a.m. Oilers game on the Saturday. That's the thing. We're getting stitched by that. I was trying to find if we're going to do a watch party in the airport. A watch party. It's all. It's it's it's. Oh. Yeah, it's complicated. Yeah. Because I think going Friday to Tuesday is a way too long. That is a very long trip. Well, because like we also have to be price sensitive, right? Like every hotel night yeah. really stacks up. So are we? Yeah, they okay. don't give hotels away in Phoenix. So a awesome. two night trip would be like flying Sunday, fly back Tuesday. But you get in in the morning. You could maybe golf in the afternoon. After the game? The no, 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 no. Sunday. Sunday when you fly oh. in. 
Oh, you could do a morning round too, but because the game's at what, two? Two. Anyways, so TBD, that one's still workshopping, but we've nailed down all the details for Seattle. Beautiful. So those are the two nation vacations this year. Yep. Keep it locked. Nationgear.ca. Find out how you can buy them. Bang, bang. If you have a family and you're thinking, I'm going to leave these motherfuckers. What day should I do it? Do it right before a nation vacation. Mm -hmm. Get four days to clear your mind. Start a new life when you return. Yeah. It's a good reset. It is. Speaking of reset, let's pause for an ad. That was good. Well-timed. A well-timed ad placement. Uh, I personally endorse that ad. Also, just while we're we're on the topic of things we're doing at the nation, just another reminder, Friday, September 1st is the Oilers Nation Golf Tournament at the Millwoods Golf Club. Millwoods. Uh, you can head to nationgear.ca. Millwoods. <laughs> head to nationgear.ca. We don't have very many spots left. Two mosaic team spots. Two, two mosaic golfers. So not that is only like two more people can buy mosaic spots. Two people can buy mosaic spots. And how many teams? And I think we have four teams left. Point is, not a lot of space left in this thing. We're working on a lot, a lot of hole activation. So that's, that's read it the between key. the lines on that's that one. That's the key. And if you want to bid on a chance to golf with Liam and I, you have to submit a bid of one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars to Tyler at OilersNation.com. If Don't you want to bid with Jay and Chalmers or golf with Jay and Chalmers. The bid has to be at least eleven $1, hundred. Did you hear Chalmers sneaking that rye into the music festival? That's a good time. The last couple times we've played, we've been second place. We're looking for somebody that's going to help bring us over the hump, get us yeah. a trophy. Yeah, a ship. Donate some money. Or donate some. Donate some money. Jesus. We're donate some money to a good cause to come have one hell of a time with Jr. and I. Trust me. You will feel like you've known us your whole life. And we're we going to start just, on the same hole as O2 Yahoo. So you can hear us rip them. It's going to be kind of a big too. crew. It's going to um, be a big crew. I love that. Also, everything goes towards Gregor's grads. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I paused so hard there. You really had to think about it. No, I'm watching the J. Is it Gregor's fads? Is it Gregor's <laughs> mad? I miss one date and I get chastised. Guys watching the baseball game because I got team a team doesn't even have a chance anymore. Blue Shows Jays up. Nation is the largest website in the nation network now. I, I thought they were the going, the 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 going back. The right yeah. they're, they're, they're in a playoff spot. Oh, that's fun. Man, I thought they were doing bad. I Everyone thought they were doing so bad. So it's like you blink and baseball changes. Like yeah, the, A week ago, the Angels were doing great. It's a very Today, slow blink. They are in a really shitty spot, right? I just don't think you pay attention to baseball that closely. Are the Orioles still doing good? Great. Yeah. Cal Rippin's got the, still got the Iron Man. Yeah, he's at 9,000 games. I've been playing a lot of MLB The Show recently. Really? You think he could beat me? Oh, no way. Good. No. <laughs> no, dude. Like, hitting is one of the hardest things Sa ever. Timing Sarah Volley thought he could beat me, so I played him and his kid online, and it got to the point where I just had to start, like, getting out on purpose because it was getting so out of hand. Well, it's still try, but I only we only have 21. Ah, okay. Yeah. So anyways, keep going. You're Frank so we, have the, we, Frank we do Jr. the diamond thing, the diamond, the, the diamond, diamond thing dynasty where you get the, you get, you, you, you earn, you play three inning games. So it's nice and easy. Yeah. You earn packs of cards. And if you get a certain card, you can put that player into your lineup. Yeah. We got Shohei first card, oh, diamond Shohei, nasty. 99 lead off hitter playing center field. He's not even pitching for us. It's the best. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's a fun game, but it's very hard to hit. The I timing is lot very, very hard. On MLB well, show. Yeah. Well, that's just be good. debrief on the home run derby. Talking about very hard to hit. Pitches were so goddamn high. Ah, uh, you needed me, bud. I know. Yep. So goddamn high. BP pitches got to be that good. I need it to be like in my wheelhouse, or I'm fucked. And, well, the BP yeah. pitches got to adapt to a swing. Well, I kept asking, lower, lower, lower. And yeah, like, yeah. I can't go any lower. I'm like, again. Yeah, yeah, you're not happy. You weren't happy about it. <laughs> Well, it wasn't, it wasn't just me. It was everyone. A lot of people were, but whatever I had. Yeah. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter. I suck. Isaac got to go to universal studio. That's mm -hmm. the big thing. That That's is the most important. Orlando, you just right? shove yeah. them out of the way. Hey, I want 10 more pitches. Do you hear about the guy in Florida that won 1.5 billion on the mega millions? And I all the, he'll do well. And all the comments were like, Oh, Huff, it's going to taxes. I'm like, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> take 700 three, million. That take sounds three good quarters of it for all I After care. After taxes, you'd probably not even clear at 800 mil. Jeez whiz. Like my God. <laughs> what a loser. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's crazy though. I don't even understand how the Powerballs get that high in the States. No. never wins them. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a pyramid scheme. It's a scam. Probably. Probably so of, the state lotto is a scam. Probably. <laughs> so you don't want to know the baseball that I've been. Greta. Greta. Do you want to know the baseball I've been keeping up with? 
Tim Robinson getting knocked out was it one was. of the funniest Tim things. Anderson, but Tim Anderson, what did I say? <laughs> Tim well, Robinson. That's Robinson. The Tim show. Robinson's got a great show on Netflix. Yeah. T- yeah. That's so Kay, sorry. I keep getting those two like names mixed up because my Instagram feed is constantly this guy's videos. They're yeah. so funny. They're so Have you ever fun. seen one with the zip line hilarious. where he's like in a dating show <laughs> and she's like, but she's going between this guy and Tim Robinson. And she's like to the one guy, I really like you. I don't know about our connection. And then she goes, and to you, Tim, I feel like you're just here for the zip line. And he's like, what? And they start showing clips and all he's doing all day is zip lining into the pool. He's like sitting down yeah. eating his food They're as like, fast as he you can got chastised, his You got chastised by the producers to come have dinner and you stayed for five minutes. He's like sitting there. Ch- people are like, so what did you, what's your connection with her? He's like, I'm, uh, yeah, it's good. I, I don't know. And he just goes back to the zip line. And then they talk about a fight that he's getting in with the zip line operator. And the guy's like, he's just too rough on it. And he's like, shut up, Mike. Shut up, Mike. And it's a great show. It's it is so really funny. funny. Like really. So, so there's a lot of clips of him and that's why I keep getting their names mixed up. But I this think guy, you should leave with Tim Robinson. If you drop your baseball glove on second base and you square up, you should not get knocked out by a muffin. True. Did yeah. you see the clip? It had to connect it though. He had glass jaw. Dude, he's like, either had, got a glass jaw or that's the, his button is like right at the chin because yeah. it put him down. He couldn't get he off. Could, he was, yeah. he couldn't even they were helping wobbling. him off. No, it's like, that's week. embarrassing. I, and when it, but when he squared up, like it was like almost like one of those old like mustache like boxing. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I'm yeah, like, very uh, much the, was. The like he did that, I'm like, you're fucked. <laughs> this guy's fighting old school. Like, if, if, yeah. if you think that's street fighting, you're and the fucked. Ump, the ump was like, I'm good. No, I loved what the ump did. Yeah, yeah, back up and he's like, do not okay. handle that. Yeah, I wish but NHL refs would do that. It's like the the fight's almost about to get broken up, and just a fist from the heavens come and just beep. It's always like duck low and like reach over and just. Oh yeah. So things that are, it's very hard to look tough doing certain things. Like drinking out of a straw is one of them, right? Another one that I learned in that fight is running down the stairs. Cause when the bullpen's cleared, all the pitchers had to run down the stairs to get on the field. (laughs) So you just had all these like big dudes, like in their cleats, not wanting to go down, slowly dancing down. That reminds me of that video that went everywhere of that guy walking down the stairs and breaking everything in his knees. Did you ever see that one? Oh Oh, my God. Yelling at the umps. I had to shut up after the first ankle, after the first ankle roll and knee break i was just like i'm out <laughs> i'm not doing this oh, <laughs> it is so that, 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 it's so funny though everybody's watching you because you're yelling at the umps and that's how you exit yeah that's f- and the meme was perfect it's like he ripped his mcl acl dvd and nbc and <laughs> all like, of it yeah the best uh but yeah the tim anderson jose ramirez fight tim anderson isn't the most likable player in the majors and i like how jose ramirez put out like a public apology the next day being like god i'm ashamed but then but didn't tim like like he's like i'm, I'm gonna remember this or something yeah he's, he's had, on twitter he's had a bad year writing gibberish that's like that's like two dudes that have now fought in that exact same spot and been like didn't rugnet or dorv punch somebody in the face right jose there batista. jose batista, batista yeah Clock like exact him. same spot yeah, but that was bullshit. Suck it, suck it them. There's some so, great memes though. Like people have put them in the octagon and all kinds of stuff. It's the best. Better fight. Tim Anderson and what's his name? Jose Ramirez. Jose Ramirez. Or the Alabama steamboat fight. I didn't see that one. That one is crazy. It is crazy. crazy. That was like and borderline riot. What they've done with this video is like the way that people have mashed it up and now put it to music. So if you haven't seen this video, it's a musical. It is a Security guard yelling at two men to move the boat, to move their boat, their pontoon boat. And one of the guys doesn't like it so much. So he goes and pushes the security guard. The security guard takes his hat off, whips it in the air and squares up and they start fighting. Why take your hat off? Because he's gangster. So (laughs) if you've seen this, I mean, (laughs) it's no, it's no, there's no way to dance around the subject that it's a black security guard fighting two white guys with no sleeves in Alabama. Okay. This is being filmed from a riverboat across water and then a dock. Oh, the hat toss so is now, hilarious. A bunch of people are yelling. These two guys start to jump the security guard. Another two guys come over and they're fighting with the security guard. And oh, all of a sudden you see a bunch of people come to the security guard's age. Fucking aid. Right. One guy even jumps in the water and swims across and it turns into an all out riot yeah. with chairs. One Real guy one. takes a chair over the head three times. Doesn't go down. <laughs> what? Oh yeah. A woman takes a chair over the head while she's laying on the ground. It was chaos. Oh, here's a the person swimming. So they jumped off the boat. The person yeah, swimming? Yeah, this is great. They are not a great swimmer. <laughs> this is a massive tilt. It's a massive tilt, but it goes on so long. Yeah. Like it's, it's insane. It's all over the news. Like it's, 
and the racial tones in it just are brutal. It being from Alabama, it's. I mean, spades a spade. It's black that guy, that guy versus swam, white people. Like, he must be so tired. He took his shoes off. Smart. Oh, he couldn't. He got one off. Oh, he, he, got got one off. He, he only smart. get one off, and then he's like, "Ah, oh, screw it. I'm in this." Oh wow! But it's like it's a brutal like. Oh wow! That was okay. Wow. Okay. This is. <laughs> so first, you're seeing this there, fight. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, we got a high oh. ground situation. The guys on the boat trying to fight the guys up. So on they the dock. go. So these two escape to their boat, and then the mob follows them. Tears them off the boat. Women are involved. Oh, geez. It is not pleasant. Oh, there, yeah, there's a woman beating up a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Wait till you see the woman in the red that takes a chair to the head oh, while I she's see, sitting I, on the I, ground. I see the woman in red right now. She takes a white. She's into the chat. It's, it's done, kind of so a the, cop or a security the guard. The WWE now. memes of people taking, chair, like putting Jerry Lawler goes, oh, you at the chair. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh my God. people fighting. Oh, oh, wow. That guy got cold clocked. Okay, yeah. He's down. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's chaos. Okay. Anyways, better fight. Which one? That one. Yeah, I <laughs> think I think we don't have an answer here. Oh, America. Oh. America. I've stopped tagging you in stadium fights because it seems like they're just every day. You can't, how can you keep up? Man. You I can't don't know up. how to be in groups anymore. You know what was a funny fight is the guy inside the food booth at, at K-Days. Oh, yeah. That and then he locks lemonade. in his hands in his pockets he after. He just you gets see his ass kicked. Yeah. In the lemonade That's guy. like that telephone booth fighting. He's just getting his ass kicked and then he just walks out of it like nothing when happened. When he puts like, his hands in his yeah. pockets like, do you know how I know it's gotten out of hand? They There was a fight at heritage days. Yeah. Which you are celebrating. I don't even know. It was just two people. These days, man. It's just, just like fight. You're celebrating heritage is you're like, a lot of those countries have beef. I was going to say, it's not actually that's worse. <laughs> North guess, and South know. Carolina. This fight is still going, by the way, <laughs> you're still watching. Conflict. I'm still watching it. It is it's a long epic. fight. It's an epic. It's this, a long, this should fight. be a Netflix special. Yeah. Oh, oh speaking oh, of which, chairs are out. Did anybody watch? Johnny Manziel. No, I yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, well, we'll, t- we'll talk about it next week. Then, I had to get caught up on Big Brother first. Oh, geez. That, that, so, the lady in the red just took a chair. Yeah, while she's sitting on the ground. While she's sitting on the ground. Yeah, over the head. Oh, These God. people have better jaws than Tim Anderson because yeah. a lot of them get hit with very hard stuff and do not go down. There's one guy who's taking shots from the back of the head and he's just like, they're not even phasing him. It's muffins to him. Oh, <laughs> Three episodes in on Big it's Brother. What do you get, think? You get drunk people. I'm not caught up. Just like lightly you shoves this lady night? away, no. and she's just a yard sale. Oh, oh, no. No. Anyways, uh, uh, I'm all caught up. One girl's playing too hard is from yeah. my two episode impression. Um, so Sari and her son, her they 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 can't act so fast on the information. No, yeah. you're exactly right. They're acting way too fast. Mm-hmm. I don't mind the I don't mind the information share. Sari, you got to keep that in your vault. Because like I'm on Team Suri for some reason. I've I, I I've never seen her in Survivor. Also, that Me one neither. girl who immediately was like, "You're her son," and he was like, "Whoa, that took like that was like no time." The whatsoever. big brother producers yeah, are yeah. probably like, "What the? Fuck? We thought you wouldn't figure this out for weeks." We asked I everybody if they all watched. over her Instagram or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It was like that one year when they had two twins playing as one player subbing in and oh. out. And I was at a golf tournament, met those twins uh, really uh, in California, and then it took like five days for all the house. He has to be like. Mm, wink what's going on here this person doesn't remember a single conversation yeah. thing from our conversation yesterday and i thought it was pretty heartfelt are you even yeah. the same person yeah um but yeah the serene her son thing it'll be interesting because eventually it'll come up it's got like because it, either someone will figure it out someone will let it leak or one of them will be in such like a dire spot that it'll be like their last ditch will yeah. be like the, but they got to keep that information close to their chest it's yeah. so early in the game to be deploying it so the really young guy Corey, who's like a world-renowned um swimmer no speaker yeah oh he was like i can convince anyone of anything then yeah. in episode two his way of convincing her was like hey i really don't want to go on the block yeah. and she was like i promise you that i won't put you out i'm like he's a persuasive speaker yeah well i from his like bio in the very first episode i was like i would like this guy a lot and then he gets in this the, the show he's now on the block first episode and all of his diary room stuff is so animated i'm like this might be one of the most annoying people i've ever seen on this show yeah and that sucks because I was really, I was hopeful to see well, what he TBT, could do. TBD. That's you got to give it a few weeks before yeah. everybody sorts it out. Cause everyone's just trying yeah. so hard. The first few episodes. Well, so a lot annoying. of good first but, impressions though. I got a lot of like, like I, the, in the, in, in Kirsten, Kirsten, the Kirsten, one that Kristen, she, Kirsten, she tried to do an Alliance fine. And then she just told like the older people in the house are like, well, but she's saying, I got you, but like, we should protect you. 
Like that's not forming two alliances or doing anything, but like, once again, you take no, that. No, she's fast forward to day narrative. 60. Like you can't do that. Yeah, You're yeah. still trying to build relationships, but one noticeable absence for most every single thing that's happened in that show, Red, where is he? He had a couple funny moments in episode two, I thought. But he's not in any conversations with is any people. Is he the, the hippie hillbilly? Big, huge hippie hillbilly, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, he has, I thought he had potential. Yeah, he's just not right, in any of the conversations. How bad were people he's, at the beam thing? That little, awful. Little, oh, terrible. terrible. Yeah. Oh my God. Really bad. Awful, really bad. Like to take the easiest way was like 11 seconds. Yeah. Like, the, yeah. Anyways, that was shocking. Anyways. I feel like it's one of those comps though. That's like an absolute mind. Cause you said, they're like, I can't just take the easy, like big way. Like I got to cut the corner. That's and, what, like, and that's yeah. the thing is you didn't have to. Oh, that's such... <sighs> uh, so I want to talk about something. Okay. There was a good, clip good place to do it. Oh, George Springer just got thrown out. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Uh, Jerry Springer. <laughs> Uh, no, I want to talk about the clip that was put out that I still stand by the comment, but I want to talk more, unpack it a little bit more and have a discussion around it okay. about my take on Evan Bouchard. My favorite part before you get into it is as soon as Waz made the clip and posted it, we were sitting in this room and Tyler goes, this one's going to take off. <laughs> you knew it immediately. It was one of that, like just the way Waz cut it, like your first little bit. And then there's my reaction. It's like, people will stay and watch this clip. Yeah, I know. It's a great clip. Yeah. Uh, and it's funny because like publicly, a lot of people are coming after me and privately, a lot of people are agreeing with me. Like, it's always <laughs> funny how that works. <laughs> so so pret fun. pretend somebody in this room, not me, yeah. of course, but never saw the clip. Yeah. Yeah. What are you? How would you explain it to that person? How would you explain it to that person? Yeah. <laughs> so we, we were talking on Oilers Nation Radio about Evan Bouchard's next contract. So I'm, I'm hoping that he signs, doesn't get greedy takes a little bit less signs for around 3.4, whatever it needs. So they can have room to sign another player. Okay. Or just have cap space to accumulate for traded line. Sure. You know, cause right now rumors are like maybe 3.9. And if you do that, it kind of hamstrings us. So that's one thing. And then it's talking about his next deal. And then I go on to talk about Evan Bouchard is like the complete package defenseman. He is a third pairing defenseman. <laughs> Because defensively, he is not strong <laughs> uh, and he can quarterback your power play. Then I compared him to Justin Schultz, which Justin Schultz is in the same situation when he played with us as Evan Bouchard is. Because right now on the depth chart, Evan Bouchard is our top pairing right defenseman. Mm -hmm. That is not setting him up for success. No, he needs to be in the third pair. because he's a, he's a six. I might walk back and say a fifth. But. That is where he needs to be to insulate him defensively because we and give him time maybe to develop his defensive game, but we don't know if it's there and just let him cash in on his offensive tools. Now I'm worried about what his next deal is going to be because if it is eight or nine million bucks, then all of us are going to start agreeing and he's going to have a giant target on his back. So take less money now. Let's go win a cup and go cash in somewhere else. I mean, I don't hate it. But it got isolated to he's a sixth defenseman, and that's the clip, and I love it. And it gets taken <laughs> off. We were like, "This play, you guys, do you guys need clicks? You're like, what kind of rag is this?" And I'm like, "Oh," well. and I do it because like I, I'm, you can go back into the scrolls of the nation, and I've been very consistent. You've never been a Bush guy. A Bush guy. Or he played in the NHL once. You were not a Bush guy. Yeah, I love the I but love his he, shot. To, I love to, him on the PP. To his, but credit, defensively, it drives me crazy. To your credit, you've been consistent fair? about it. You've been consistent yeah, about it. And, and, and you can disagree with me, but like, do we all agree he's a good defense defenseman? <laughs> I think he's a great offensive upside defenseman. Like that's how you, but he, he needs to be, are you reading the comments? He yeah. needs to be slotted <laughs> that way. You were. That looked like a shit eating grin from somebody. <laughs> well, read, 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 some some read some of them. I had some guy like, like old people are coming up to me being like, my son saw this ridiculous take and they showed me it. And it was, I laughed because it was you. <sighs> All right. No, no, that's it. You just wanted I, me to say my piece. No, yeah, I thought that's what you wanted. <laughs> but I thought we could. I thought we could talk about it. I we have many times. We do lots of shows together, and we've talked about this lots and lots of times on the show. Um, I just disagree with you. I think there's now been two instances where when he's so he should be our top pairing right defense. He's he could be he's like defensively he good enough with let the men talk. Yeah, fair. there have now been two instances. <laughs> where he plays on the team's second pairing with a very good defensive veteran partner. And both time, the results have been exceptional. Him with Duncan Keith in the playoffs, uh -huh. him with Matthias Ekholm down the stretch and in the playoffs last year. How was he in the playoffs this year defensively? I thought him and Ekholm were fine. They handled so, their assignment. 
Okay. So <laughs> whoever has got the time to go and watch those games and clip up him on the ice, I would like to look at that together and okay. see if we can, what, uh, sure. maybe Waz can do it for the next hour. Uh, he's, oh <laughs> wait, he's busy. <laughs> I was, we've done and this, it's not like, but Jay, I, we've done this whole thing know, so many times. I know. So, so, I, so okay. And everyone thinks I'm attacking Bush. It's just like, no, like when I compared him, <laughs> when I compared him to Justin Schultz, we put Justin Schultz in the first pairing, expecting him to be the answer. We set him up for failure. But CJ, with your argument, and you I get put, you put him in the right pairing and let his offensive skill take over because, like, we don't know if the defensive skill is going to catch up, but he is very strong offensively. Okay, but there's no way to quantify what you're saying because you're saying I'm saying he shouldn't be in the first pair so because I'm he's, he's bad a, defensively. So well, that's all defensemen are going to get burnt, all defensemen are going to have a giveaway now and then. You're saying that Bouchard just has way more and that he should be then in the bottom six. But how do we? prove it or have eyes on it like how if we watched him he your m you're literally saying i saw him as a first line defense no, i never said first line defense i said second pair second pair sorry and he was great and you're saying that's not the case <laughs> so how i'm saying so there's a window in time there a giveaway season where metric we can in look the playoffs, at playoffs it was not let's have a bet i'm trying to figure in the out the playoffs a bet. it was not Put him in the third pair, protect him plus and minus cash and leverage and, and cash in on where he's good but the worry is like if he's 8 million bucks or whatever he ends up signing for for big ticket like when does that happen that, well it depends we don't know what his next deal is his with deal. Evan Bouchard on the ice in the playoffs at 5 on 5 uh-huh. the Oilers outshot the opposition 124 to 106 they were outscored 10 to 9 mm-hmm. so only outscored by one even though he had a pretty tough assignment as a top 4 D-man mm-hmm. um the expected goals were great though but I know you hate that and I don't really love that stat either so that's fine mm-hmm. um and he started 51% of his shifts in the offensive zone. So more or less 50, 50. I don't know. I just think that's, that's good for what he had to do. And he also played more five on five minutes than anyone else, any other defenseman on the Oilers in the playoffs. So he didn't get caved. He didn't fail in any way that assignment. And he played more than anyone else starting 50% of the off 51% of the offensive zone. What are potential so deals let's for him? Isolate right? the 10 goals against. Okay. And you want to go back, watch the 10 goals again, see how many of them were directly his fault. Well, and just, and just see like, well, but like it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'd actually be down to do that. Yeah. What's his potential deal coming up? I think I, he's getting two by 3.8. Ugh, so that doesn't help us. Because it's Three, $300,000 a year. Three point, it's, well, we're, are, we're that. Maybe he'll surprise shallow. us like, or like McLeod surprised us. Right? We're that shallow. Like it's not, not, it's the next deal you cash in. Like the 300 grand right now, globally in terms of your career is nothing. Yeah, you should help the team a little and, bit. And, that, and that's if you like, want to be I'm on pushing for that. Like, and I like I, Evan Bouchard at that for those two years or whatever. That's great. Price, price safe, probably can be some value. Gives us opportunity to maybe address our defense at the deadline. Cause like our defense isn't strong enough. Like when I see him slated in the first pair, I'm like, Ugh. that's scary. Cause on a good, where is he slotted on a really good team? Se- second pair. Maybe not. Hey, Wanya. No. So. You know what tonight is? Uh, the, the Thursday, Thursday. NFL preseason openers. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, we're not talking about that. I know. I'm just um, kidding. I just, I, I think wanna, your Bouchard, hey, I think no, 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 your, no, no, I think your good. Bouchard, com, I, I, I get I just the gist of it to, now. I just wanted to, cause like a lot of, a lot of people that listen would saw that mm-hmm. clip isolated just that. So I just want to expand it. When could a potential deal be done? Any minute. When does it have to be? It has to be done any minute. It, it doesn't have to be, minute. but it probably will be. Should get done soon. So can I ask you a question too about uh, Jeff Jackson? Is that his name? Yeah. I don't know much about this person. I know that he was Conor McDavid's agent. Now he is part of our upper management. Runs the organization. Yeah. The question was, why would you take a, why would you take a cushy job like a player agent for the most successful hockey player? And well, not successful, I guess the best power, best hockey player in the world right now yeah. and move to th- that role. Cause you're Challenges competitive. Me. You're you want to challenge yourself and you want to win a Stanley cup. Can't win a Stanley cup being an agent. Eh, well, he's done, really, he's done every day, like job there is yeah. in the NHL. So I, he's had a taste in all of it. But for me, it's like, and, and like now that we've kind of talked about it and I think a lot of people in this room have the same opinion, like this, Gives us a really good chance of keeping Connor forever. Do you think he moves into like, is he going to take Poho and GM like Kyle Dubas? Jeff Jackson? Yeah. I don't think he'll ever be the GM. 
I don't, I think it's kind of like, he's like, he's not a, he's not a hockey operator. He's like the CEO of the Oilers. He's like Nicholson's job, right? So Oilers Nation, tell me what to think. I like this guy. I like this guy. would fall underneath it. Yeah, but he's not OEG CEO. I don't think he'll ever be a GM. No, he's Oilers CEO. He's the of hockey, ops. hockey ops CEO. Oh, okay. So do I, yeah. do I like this Tyler or oh, there's nation. Tell me what I need to think. Yeah, you should. Yeah, like you it. should like, you like it. Really awesome. like Perfect. forwardy, Love it. progressive higher. Are you like going yep. after a player agent for that job and not like, I could have seen a scenario where next summer it's like, Oh, Ken Holland's gone. Nicholson's gone. Like we need to replace them. And the others are like Doug Wilson or like, uh, what's it's an guy? insurance Doug policy for Connor. And it also gives Connor a real strong voice at the table. Yeah. And Charmer, did you know that they're going to replace the Bobby Nix burger now? With yeah, what? Jeff Jackson jambalaya. Yeah. Ooh. And they serve it to you in a napkin because otherwise it's 25 cents for a cup. Yep. Not in Beaumont. Went and got a, went and got a little drive through from there. Tim Hortons. Guess what? They didn't ask me. Would you like a bag? No. Nope. Yeah. They're doing they it They just right. gave it to me. Wanya Jr. and I were at McDonald's in Oliver Square, which is <laughs> renowned for being a circus. You can go look it up online. It ain't doing well. But anyways, <laughs> we're there. And the, they have about a 2% give you your food at the window. It's the egg wave location. It's just continue on and go sit in the parking lot. So we're sitting there and he's watching out the window. And this poor kid is going with like four trays of food. And he's looking and he's going around. He doesn't know what he's doing. But then he hands you like your individual food items. That's too much. And I'm like, and yet they hold the debit card machine out the window on a stick. Mm-hmm. And then like put your food in their mouth and carry Here's it across a fry the one kitchen. at a time. Yeah. They yeah. baby bird. It <laughs> yeah. your like I'm a baby bird and I'm being <laughs> fed yeah. by the guy. That, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, too it's much. Junior was not much. happy with how long his food took. I'm just going to tell you right now, you're not a guy to sit around and wait. So the other day I said, I just said no to the tray, but I ordered an egg McMuffin coffee, did not get a hash brown. They had the fries, but then I had a bunch of loose fries on the tray that they handed. Those are your fries. I don't want that. Well, of course, if you have loose fries on the tray, insane. Oh. Can I tell a story from my personal life? Mm-hmm. I've said it on the pod before. I have beef with a squirrel that is living under my shed. It turned into a whole family of squirrels. Oh, there was congratulations. A lot. They're freaking underneath your squirrel? shed. Oh, they'd be oh, fucking oh, underneath yeah. my shed. So I guess you could go to the love shack. Uh-huh. <laughs> and this squirrel <laughs> over the course of the summer has gotten more and more aggressive and less scared of me. I used to be able to just run at him and clap and he would. Oh, bugger he's off. pounded in there. He ain't got nothing. He's an yeah. alpha. So then it got to the point where like he would stand on like the fence post and like I'd run at him and he wouldn't mock you. I would pick up (laughs) rocks and throw rocks at him and he wouldn't go anywhere. He would just like watch the rocks kind of fly around. He just takes it and stares you down. Yeah. So on last weekend or on the holiday Monday, I woke up, I was going to do some yard work, needed to put like some seed down and whatnot. So I go into my shed, I come out. As one does in September or in in August. There was an area. I know. I'm just kidding. And this thing is on top of the shed as I'm walking out barking at me making his little squirrel noises. He's not going anywhere. He hops on a tree and goes to the branch to get like as close to me as possible. And I'm like, this is, I'm done. No more of you. So I have a live trap. There's some blueberries in the live trap, put it out there within five minutes. I got him. But then I felt sympathy. All right. Like felt bad because he's Stockholm syndrome. You identify with your captor. Yeah. He's freaking out in there. Right. And he's like climbing on all the walls and I felt bad. Uh, Anyways, I safely relocated him. And the rest of his family? Well, relocated him, did the drive across oh, the no. river. They have no <laughs> provider now. Come back, go to work the next day. Tuesday, I get home from work. And as soon as I get out of my truck, I hear a chir- squirrel chirping again. I'm like, oh, it's probably the other ones like freaking out. So I felt bad. So I trapped the second one. And I was hoping there was only two. This one was smaller than the other one. So I'm assuming it's the mother squirrel. I think I got the father on day one. Relocated this one to the same spot. Well, don't worry. The babies really stand a chance now. Well, and then today <laughs> I'm. They'll raise themselves. I'm She's leaving to work. One and time. I see on my fence a tinier one. So now I'm like, damn it. Now I have to trap They're like a Russian third, nesting dolls. Yeah. I have to trap a third squirrel when I get home from work. So today. where are you putting them? Like a neighbor's backyard? The river. Yeah, I'm, um, <laughs> I'm going like past St. Albert, north of St. Albert in the Sturgeon. Mm. Shallow graves. I'm letting them out. Oh, okay. I, have a, I have a hockey stick and I prop open the little door with the hockey stick and then hold my foot on the other side of the cage and mm-hmm. boop, open her up and the squirrel runs out. Mm. So anyways, that's been my life. And that's the update on my beef with the squirrels is I'm humanely relocating them. Yes. Cool beans. I got to go run a tarp. <laughs> well, <let's> go. <laughs> what a goof. Get a good spot. Oh, Close to the close to the bar. Okay, this finally, is some kind I of can podcast. say how I feel about his Bouchard takes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, yeah, no, squirrels are fucked, man. When they get into your, if they get into your house oh, and like, you have to, about, yeah, yeah, trap them. Like it costs big money. I don't know. Where'd you get the trap? Uh, How do you just have in laws dad had a trap land yeah. that he loaned me. It costs a lot of money for squirrel people to come get squirrels. 90 bucks a visit is what I looked into. So mm-hmm. 90 bucks to set the trap. They leave. When you get the squirrel, you got to call them. 90 bucks to come back and get the squirrel and take them away. You know, 180 bucks a squirrel. I can't afford that. You know what the most shocking part of this whole thing is? The nudity? Blueberries. Ah, I Googled it. Squirrels like blueberries. Who would have thought? The They're a delicious day, treat. Second day I got them with grapes and strawberries in the back of the cage. I mean, when you think of chipmunks or squirrels, what do you think of? Nuts. Not peanuts. Nuts. Yep. Got them with fruit. Who would have thought? And then they weren't even eating the fruit. I'm like, you're trapped in there. And they were just- Might ignored. as well eat it, man. Yeah, like get into it. One time when I was in high school, your am check, I couldn't find my wallet. I'd lose it all the time. It was high school. Mm-hmm. And I'm in my parents' house. I live in the basement. And I go to look underneath the couch and I pull the couch up a little bit. Six inches from my face is a squirrel. Spooky. It's on. So I'm like, ah, and I'm yelling. And I go and I drag a bookshelf across the doorway to try to trap it in. My stepdad comes mm-hmm. to the door. What in the good fuck is going on down here? Then he sees there's an active squirrel fight going on. And I had a hockey stick. I put a helmet on. And I was trapped in the room with the squirrel on behalf of the family. And then we had to bring a trap down. And it was like oh, two I seconds. Say you like killed them. I was going to. Yeah. But I couldn't. He was moving around, moving and grooving. You know, they shake and bake. Yeah. Then we went and got one of those traps, though. So. Smart. Did I ever tell you about the time? Remember how I told you in the last uh, couple podcasts ago that we had a dump truck back with my company when I was young? Yeah, you were in charge of it. And I, so there would be garbage piles that would sit there for a little bit longer because we couldn't get to them in time. One time I got to it and I picked up a piece of plywood and there was like mama, baby mouse, one mama mouse, oh, no. papa mouse, and like 12 freshly born mm. baby mice. What'd you do? Do you really want me to tell you? No, yeah. no. I do. I want to know. <laughs> no, I'll oh. tell you. How many made it? Not a lot. Not a lot lived that day, my friend. Uh. Would you just smush it with the boards? Okay, I, we're not talking about that. There is no <laughs> way. To, no, you can tell it. You can tell it It involved the back. Uh, you know, you put something over top. I don't. Yeah, yeah. It's, mm. it's, it's not pretty. It's Boop. not pleasant. Don't care. They were in a That's spot disgusting. where they were going to infest the house if I, if I let them. I, ca- I had to get rid of them, man. You had Those, to, man. I had to. to do you know, well, and anybody that thinks that like, I wasn't going to just set a bunch of mouse traps and let them do it on their own. No, I had man. to take care of business and it that's shit disgusting. needs to be done. If you they're know? all lined up in a perfect line. When you move a board, that's a one. Board Listen, multi-kill. there's only one thing like mice, like chipmunks and squirrels. I don't want to trap them and kill them. I fucking think those are cool. Like they're cool. And I yep. hate when I see when one gets run over by mice. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Not today. Not today. Anyways, well, um, it's been an hour. Jay left, so I think we're probably good with uh, with this episode of Real Life Podcast. Yeah. Shout out to Lil Tay. Shout out to Lil Tay. She, she, dead. she back. She came out dead. She's still alive. Uh, if you're looking for dinner tonight, may I suggest the new Oodle Noodle Hot Hot Box? Handles are back. It's getting hot, hot over the next few weeks at Oodle Noodle with the new spicier than ever Hot Hot Box. Keep I cool want to make summer. it clear that my brother and I are safe and alive, but I'm completely heartbroken. And somewhere in that statement, she says. I am alive and I am enjoying an Oodle Noodle Hot Hot Box. Oh, mm-hmm. Little Tay, thank you for the endorsement. There Her name is not Claire Hope. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back on maybe with a ep- Monday episode from Vancouver somehow. Maybe. We'll see. Okay. I'll just do one solo in here and pretend to be everybody. Why Hello. not? Who's going to Vancouver? Greta. Some of us. For what? Close <sighs> mega deals, Chalmers. We think you go to Vancouver. What do you guys go to Vancouver for? Cool. Isn't that? Yeah. Winter Olympics. Okay, I'll just ask Jay tonight. You're really going to make me wait. I'll just tell you in like two seconds when he turns. We're not on the air. Oh, I thought he did. Well, we can't. Okay, bye. Oh, (laughs) I thought he did.